Welcome back to Distro Wars here on Switch to Linux. And today we are going to have a look at two MX Linuxes. MX Linux natively has XFCE and it also has a new KDE version. And some people have asked which one of these is better. Of course, I'm using MX Linux on the XFCE version for my writing computer presently. That is a Lenovo S21e. I have a full review of how it works on that particular distro, uh, excuse me, on that particular laptop. So you can go ahead and have a look at that full review. But today we wanna have a look at pinning these two up next to each other, which one is going to be the best one? Does it really make much of a difference? And so we are gonna go ahead and have a look at that. Now, before we get in here, let's head on over to their website, which is mxlinux.org. And you can get all of the information over there. You can follow along on the various social medias up there. I believe there's a uh, support page over here as well. Uh, this is an excellent project. Now, they have, of course, XFCE, KDE, and Fluxbox advertised. The XFCE also has Fluxbox built into it. Uh, KDE, we'll check if that does. I, I really don't remember. Now, the XFCE comes with a couple of different versions. So you can see here, it's telling you the options. So you have how to choose XFCE and Fluxbox. We have a 32-bit version. We have a 64-bit kernel, and we have a 64-bit advanced hardware stack, pronounced Oz. Now, for people who are curious about what that is, he does have a separate page on his blog section about the advanced hardware stack support, so you can read through that. And basically, to sum it up, what this is going to do is it is going to patch your kernel for newer hardware because MX Linux runs on Debian, and Debian generally stays behind the on the release cycles, mostly for sheer stability. You generally don't run Debian on the latest and greatest cutting edge. There's going to be some things that don't work well. However... However, uh, they have patched the advanced hardware support to allow MX Linux to run on newer hardware. So those are your options with XFCE. And then the KDE only has the Oz version. So you can grab it directly from the repos, mirrors, or torrents. And the current release features. We have a variety. So we have uh, MX Fluxbox. We have um, uh, KDE version. Our kernels were 419 for our kind of our basic Debians or the advanced hardware stack is 5.6. And you can see that you can easily upgrade kernel packages, upgrade or download, uh, downgrade kernel packages. And uh, there's a lot of key applications that are built in. We have uh, Firefox, VLC. You'll see that says 79 because he re refreshes the distros you know, a couple times a year. And so that'll always come with the latest. So 79 was, was the latest when the latest version was out. Of course, if you run updates, as soon as you install it, then you're going to get the latest. We have VLC, Clementine, LibreOffice. We have either um, 6.1 or version 7 if you're using the MX test repos. You have a lucky backup. How lucky. Passwords, keys, uh, XFCE terminal. Of course, I'm not sure if uh, the KDE version will probably not have the XFCE terminal. It will have uh, the uh, default one for uh, KDE. Our user experience tells us about that. They do have a variety of tools. This is what makes MX Linux so good. It's the massive amount of MX Linux tools. And then extra packages and things like that. So there is what you have as far as your, uh, your various builds there. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, boot one of these up. And then we will go ahead and start. And I believe, according to our naming convention here, we are going to go ahead and start with Plasma first. Now, as this guy is booting up, um, I am going to mention here out of the box that I did actually have some issues for the first time on Virtual Machine when I installed it and actually uh, ran updates. So these are running how they installed. I did not run any, uh, any updates, so we are going to get notifications for updates on these. I found that when I updated them, the advanced hardware stack first initially worked just fine, but then it would fail to boot. And I'm not sure why that is. So rather than figure all that out, I just decided let's just go ahead and run it uh, without the um, uh, without updating it just for now. Now I think that that's probably because my 
virtual machine here is getting pretty stinking old. And so it's about time to update my system. That's what I project the issue is. And I can test that if I try it on my Arch computer. And if it boots in, then hey, that'll actually tell you what it is. See here on the Plasma version, absolutely beautiful loading screens. Uh, there is so much that went into just the look and the feel of the Plasma version that uh, honestly, it's almost worth running it just for that. He does have it set up in a more standard way versus the XFCE where the panel is along the side. And you can see in a standard MX Linux format, it is very well styled. So out of the box, this is the uh, menu that we have. Not my favorite menu, but it does. It's actually the fastest of the menus, and that's why I think that he loads this one. Um, but uh, inside of here, we are basically getting the same MX Linux. It's going to have a lot of similar look, a lot of similar feel. We have an update notifier here. It's going to tell us we have update 63 of them, that if I update on this particular computer setup, eh, it won't allow me to boot. So we're not going to do that. All right, as far as the basic tools, uh, what you're going to find between both of these two distros is they're going to have similar software, except on this version here, we are going to have the Plasma version of a variety of different tools versus the XFCE versions. Except I believe, if I remember correctly, I think that they did keep, um, uh, they did use a different file manager, if I remember correctly. Let me go ahead and have a look at that. Oh, no, they didn't. They did use Dolphin. Uh, I, th I thought one of the one of the plasma versions. I know they used a different one. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, Farron. Uh, Farron OS, I think, still uses Nemo. Uh, I think he can correct me if he's in there. I didn't see him pop up yet. Oh, yeah, he's there. Correct me, Farron, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can have a look at. Uh, you can see we're using console here instead of the XFCE terminal. And if we go ahead and look at HTOP, we're running on just over 500 megabytes of RAM. So this guy looks pretty stinking nice. Let's go ahead and close this window. Now, as far as the integration, the Plasma is going to be integrated a little bit differently because it does have your separate system tools and your separate MX tools. Whereas in XFCE, he's able to put the MX tools directly into the settings configuration. So if we go into our basic settings and system settings, Go into your basic settings here. This is your Plasma settings, and he does not have the MX tools built into here. But what he does have, you can see we have custom themes as far as desktop themes. You know, everything's really done well inside of here. There's a lot that goes into the, the look and the feel. But any, everything here within this uh, within the system settings is your standard Plasma settings. Now, we do have a separate MX settings, you can see the MX tools. This is the extra tools that you have. The ability to create a system snapshot, create USB, uh, live USB keys, boot repairs, just a variety of different things, including the codex installer. We have NVIDIA driver installers. We have a variety of other, of other tools here. Now, the other thing that the Plasma version is missing is um, the welcome screen did not show up on me the first time, unless I'm forgetting about it and I forgot to toggle this guy on. It does. It is here. I might have actually just forgotten about it because I had to reinstall these guys a couple of times. Uh, the MX welcome, if it shows up, it's going to show up. We have tweaks to the panels. We have our tools. We have the ability to install your codex. Now, the thing that makes MX Linux, and this is going to apply to both of these versions, so good is we do have a popular apps tool. This guy here is in one of the greatest uh, package managers. It does not have everything, but it is going to have all of your most common software here, including the ability to install things like uh, like Brave and Water Fox. I wonder if he's going to put Edge in here. Ooh, I don't know. Run with the dolphin. Let me know. Are you going to put Edge in this guy? <laughs> Um, we do have a variety of different applications here. We also have the ability to go, here's our stable repo. We have our testing repo. Uh, we have Debian backports. So Debian backports is going to allow you to run uh, some newer software. So um, you can actually run uh, you know, run a variety of other of other software packages, and we have flat packs over here as well. So all of these guys are built in. 
So you can see it's grabbing from Flathub. And then uh, we're going to, uh, you can actually go ahead and change that if you want to later. It's going to take a moment to populate this, uh, this page out. But the package installer makes things very simple. If you know exactly what you're looking for, if you're looking for something, you can uh, quickly and easily find that type of stuff. Of course, the other things that you do have in here is if you do want to run other desktop environments, you can go ahead and run other desktop environments. They do make it fairly easy to do. So there is your Plasma version. Overall, what you're going to find with the Plasma version, you get a very good, cleanly, um, uh, a cleanly themed Plasma build. It makes the computer feel very modern without compromising any system performance. It does look very nice, and overall, I find that uh, in the few times I've used it, uh, other than just recently where something is breaking it on the updates, it does work very, very well. Again, I think that that issue is just because of the age of my virtual machine. It's about time to run updates on this thing. Get me into, you know, a more modern version of things. But anyway, uh, there is your Plasma version of MX Linux, and we will be back and have a look at our uh, we'll look at our XFCE version next. All right, so here we are on the XFCE login screen. So there's our super secret password there. And over here is where you can choose XFCE or Fluxbox. The default is going to be your XFCE. I did not see the selector on the um, Plasma. I did look for it when we were logged in before. Uh, I'm finding sometimes this will boot full screen, sometimes it will not. Let's see what we got. It looks like we might actually have full screen boot today. Woohoo, we got full screen boot today. Look at that. All right, so there we have it. So this is MX Linux. I know I intentionally set this one to show the dialogue at startup. I, I'm thinking I saw the MX welcome screen on Plasma. I just uh, forgot to check the button to keep showing it because it's uh, it'll sh only show the first time unless you check that box. Again, same thing. We have the tools. We have the the uh, the tweak panel. So tweaking things, which is the uh, the panel and and a few other items in there. So we didn't look at that under the uh, Plasma version, but you do have that option as well. Codex, the popular apps. This is all going to be the same as well. Here we're going to have everything is matching whatever is usually in XFCE. So we have Thunar here instead of Dolphin. And if you look at your various accessories, you'll find it contains the XFCE tools rather than uh, many of the other ones. So let's go ahead and uh, find ourselves a terminal there. And let's look at our HTOP real quick. Just have a look at our comparatives. So this guy's running 463 megabytes of RAM, so a little bit less than, um, than Plasma was running. So... Definitely, if, if the amount of system RAM being utilized is your chiefest concern, this one's going to be a little bit lower. As far as the theming and the styling, as much as I think that XFCE oftentimes looks old and dated, MX Linux is one of the distros that themes this best, so it does not actually look all that old. So I can say that the theming and the setup of MX Linux is definitely a lot better. Uh, as in the um, Plasma version, we do have an updates tool that will eventually tell us like 200 and something updates will be available. And as far as our uh, software, everything else is going to be effectively the same. Now, um, looking the two over, which one is going to give you the best stability overall? I think that overall, XFCE is a significantly less buggy and easier to manage system. So if you're looking for the ease of management, I think the XFCE version is going to be a little bit better for you. Uh, Plasma does have a lot more options. And as far as the settings, as we had mentioned, uh, the MX settings uh, will be in this somewhere. It's got to find them again. Uh, I thought they were in here. There we go. So yeah, the, your MX tools are kind of integrated in with this. So here's your MX tools. So it's all inside of the systems panel. All the same tools are going to be here. It's just that um, everything is organized into one settings panel on XFCE, which uh, Plasma already has too many settings and too many configurations. So breaking apart the tools and the tweaks and uh, separate system settings makes the XFCE version a little bit more organized and feel a little bit less bloated, even if in reality, they're going to be about the same. Nevertheless, you do have the option here in inside of this to find the MX tools there, and you can find them 
uh, just on the on the menu here as well. So overall, the two are going to give you a very similar experience. Really, your downsides of XFCE is you don't have the advanced hardware stack. So if you are running on newer hardware, you are going to want to go with the Plasma version. But if you're running on older hardware and need something a little bit lighter, you have the option of doing the XFCE version. Now, the uh, all of your various other tools, all of your various software, everything else is going to be effectively the same. Uh, we have our... Uh, user manager, codex installer, you know, everything that, that we have inside of the Plasma is going to be in over here as well. So not a whole lot more to show you as far as these because the two systems are very similar. All of your differences are just really boil down to the desktop environment. So the question is, which one of these is better? Which one of these guys should you actually use when you are looking at which MX version you need? Well, honestly, both of them are going to run fairly well. Both of them have the ability to install extra desktop environments. It's not every desktop environment you can install on like Debian or Arch, but it certainly is going to give you a variety of desktop environments with the single click in the custom MX software. KDE is going to get you the advanced hardware stack is your only option. It's going to get you a little bit more modern of a system. And honestly, it does look a little bit flashier than the XFCE version. Your XFCE, though, still gives you 32-bit option. It gives you the normal or the advanced hardware stack. And it gives you a little bit less system RAM. So I'm not going to say which one is absolutely better. As somebody said at the beginning of the live stream, whichever one is best is the one that makes you the happiest. And honestly, that's what you're, you're going to get with MX Linux. Neither one of these is going to be the perfect option for everybody. Neither one's going to be the wrong option for anybody. Just go ahead and look at both of them and decide which one you would like to use. For me, I'm still using the XFCE version just because the computer that I am using MX Linux on, I want the operating system to take as little RAM as possible. And that thing running MX Linux on XFCE runs just as good as any beefy computer running Linux Mint Cinnamon or anything else. So this is overall a good operating system to use. So there's kind of my take. Let me know your take on these in the comments down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.